Continuing production of The Open Mind has been made possible by grants from Ann Olnick Gumowitz, the Engelson Family Foundation, the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, the Joan Gans Cooney and Peter G. Peterson Fund, the Rosalind P. Walter Foundation, the Joanne and Kenneth Wellner Foundation, Sally Menard and Norton Garfinkel, and from the corporate community, Mutual of America. I'm Alexander Hefner, your host on The Open Mind. When I interviewed her for The Washington Post in 2012, former Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor described her post-jurist venture, iCivics, free-to-play virtual games to teach government to America's civically deprived youth. We need a focus, a requirement, a concern, she said passionately. You don't need legislation. You need a commitment. That should be the objective of every high school and middle school in America. Amen, I say. Recipient of the MacArthur Foundation's Creative and Effective Institutions Award for Reinvigorating Civics Education for a New Generation of Americans, iCivics titles ripped from Hollywood, Supreme Decision, Lawcraft, Executive Command, and We the Jury, are employed across the country in an estimated 50% of middle school social studies classrooms. Justice O'Connor has partnered with today's education luminary, to pave new frontiers in digital learning, to fill the troubling civic education void. iCivics Executive Director Luis Dubay was formerly Managing Director of Digital Learning at Boston-based WGBH, where she launched PBS Learning Media, a platform of digital resources that reached one and a half million educators. Since its launch in 2009, iCivics has empowered teachers with dynamic resources to educate the next generation of citizens. So the organization has already bred, in effect, a first cohort of more civically enterprising youngsters. And I'm wondering, Louise, if that can be correlated with greater youth participation. It's going to have to. Right. We're going to have to get there, and we're going to have to make some very serious, concerted effort to get there. So we're going to do that partially by focusing on this electoral process. We start in middle school. Most of our, uh, all of our curriculum is designed primarily for the middle school. Um, but we have found recently that about 30 percent of our traffic, which we think translates to about 15 percent of high school uh, government or uh, politics or um, uh, economics or history teachers are actually using the iCivics platform now. So that means that iCivics has not only been effective in middle schools but is now starting to be effective in high schools. We need to take that seriously. Uh, Justice O'Connor was at our recently at our board meeting and we've all agreed that high school is our next step. So we're going to uh, take high schools by storm in America, um, and we're going to not only make sure that we that all of our kids really understand our founding documents, how our democracy works, how the electoral process works, but also are active in their community. That we partner with other organizations where we can see that if you do something, something happens in your community. At that point. We've made the link for the student, and at that point, they feel responsible for the health of our community and our democracy. That's our hope. Um, we're going to start focusing on that probably next year because the electoral campaign is an enormous opportunity for all of us in civic education uh, to focus attention, media attention, uh, parents' attention, teachers' attention on this issue. We've had such incredibly low voter turnout from youth uh, voters. It's, it's really appalling. It's appalling on the international scale. I think we are uh, ranked as 138th 
uh, in nation, uh, among uh, nations in, in the world uh, in terms of voter participation from youth. That is unacceptable from the biggest democracy in the world, um, and we need to do something about that. So what we will do at iCivics is release a new game, uh, essentially a sequel game for our very, very popular Win the White House. Uh, Win the White House starts you at the primary uh, process and ends you at the election. Um, and you as a, as a player can decide to invest in uh, appearances in any state. Uh, you can uh, uh, generate go fundraise in any state. If you fail, Barnstorm. that's it. <laughs> exactly. Um, and we hope that uh, releasing this new game and having a campaign with other organizations that are focused on this issue to make sure that teachers actually teach about the electoral process during the campaign is going to lead to more youth voters because you've got some kids who are, you know, just about ready to vote in high school, right? So right. we got to... And ready to vote after presumably those first iCivics learners beginning in 2009, 2010, fast forward five or six years, it's your first time voting opportunity. Right. Are you tracking those young people who were first exposed to iCivics in 2009 or 2010? Unfortunately, we made our platform so easy to use that you can go and, and use it without actually our knowing who you are or why. And I think that's part of our success, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's been part of why we've reached uh, over 7 million kids uh, in the U.S. And so we don't actually track you. And uh, uh, today with the issue with the <laughs> student privacy, we probably don't want to be doing that. Um, we want to make sure that... Uh, but you're aware of individual school districts that have employed these resources so you yes. can knock on their door yes. mm -hmm. and see well I wonder if in this county youth voter turnout improved. Right. I, I think it, it um, we have to be a little bit careful in terms of expectations. We want to make sure we start in the middle school as a lot of time a lot of influences between the middle school and when you actually vote. So what we want to do is to make sure that we keep on uh, having the experience go through high school, have the experience go through our partners, deepen our relationship with those kids, and then ultimately measure, you know, have we had a tremendous success in terms of measuring voter outcome. And that is our goal. That's everyone's goal. But we have to be careful that we are fighting a popular culture that is uh, aimed directly against what we're trying to do. Um, and while we see a lot of positive signs, uh, we, we just have to measure <laughs> a little bit temper our, our expectations. Well, your mantra is do something. Absolutely. Whether that's attending a town hall, writing a letter to your editor, these are the skills that are not taught. Here's a, a Wall Street Journal op-ed in which Justice O'Connor wrote with a former senator and astronaut, John Glenn. Civics education cannot be an afterthought. Citizenship is a skill that must be taught over time with the same devotion we give to reading, math, and the pursuit of scientific knowledge. That's right. We believe it should be taught alongside and integrated with these subjects. Absolutely. We believe that citizenship is really just a part of being a good, responsible person in America, right? It is not something different. The mission of school was originally right, to make uh, responsible, engaged citizens in the U.S. Okay. And that is what... Uh, we're about, right? So um, there's not a separate thing. So what we want to do is to make sure that we're integrated in social studies classroom as well as science classroom, as well as reading classrooms. We have two tools that will teach kids how to read primary sources and then write argumentative essays. Those are some of the hardest skills to teach kids and we have the tools that you can use in your English class and but you're not reading about nothing, right? You're going to be reading about something of importance. And why don't you read about our founding documents, for example, right? Why don't you read about um, things that will let you understand as a kid how you can have impact on your community? And I think that's um, what we want to do. We want to be everywhere within the school. I was asking you before if teachers unions and public school teachers have been a champion have been your ally, and your response was interesting. Well, we really uh, have not had either support or criticism from unions at all. We're somewhat uh, neutral on that topic. And, and that is primarily because we're here to ensure that the teachers have the tools to do what they need to do. And in fact, what's interesting about iCivics is that we've had more success 
since the Common Core has become a reality in the classroom than before. And the reason is that um, we think, I mean, this is pure speculation, but we think that we've got tools that are really easy to use. Right? So you, the, the teacher can take our tools and assign it as homework tomorrow. She doesn't need to even know <laughs> about some of these complicated cases, Supreme Court cases. But she can assign it, and the kids can do it in the computer lab, and it will always take less than your... The classrooms are usually, an instructional block is about 45 to 50 minutes, right? And so our um, games are always played within that 20, 25, you know, 15 minute block. And so it's easy to use. Every game has a, g a game guide. And so that, the reality was that social studies teachers became under attack after the Common Core, essentially, right? They've had to teach a lot of things that are covered by the Common Core, and they wanted in their hearts to teach about civic education, and we made it easy for them. So it's a, it's a really a reversal of what's happened uh, within uh, other... So in you know, effect, this curricular innovation is being welcomed. Yes, absolutely. I mean, this iCivics has been more popular than most digital education sites in the country ever. Um, it has had tremendous uh, adoption rates, uh, particularly since 2012. We've seen a hockey stick-like improvement in the adoption rate since 2012. So it's, it's rather uh, amazing, the, the success it's had. How do you compete with Madden? With, with, <laughs> with, with because interestingly, yeah, in right. your materials, it seems like you have formed something of a partnership with EA and other yes. organizations yes. that are creating digital games right. that are not necessarily in the public right. interest. Right. I'll tell you, I, I think that uh, the gaming mechanics and the use of video games um, is really important to iCivics, and that's because kids really want to do the work, right? Even though it's hard work. Our games are not easy. It is not easy in argument wars for you to pick the better evidence to support your argument, right? That's hard to do. But the gaming mechanics help you sort of overcome that and find it fun and get points and be engaged and be in the action. So that, that's one way um, that we do that. But really, that's not the point, right? The point is the instructional goal, and that's why teachers have taken up the games. It's not because we're the best game in the world. It's not because we're Madam or some other, you know, Angry Birds type um, mm -hmm. mechanics. It's really because it's clear what you're going to learn uh, from the games. And the teachers really appreciate that we've taken the, the time to set out what the instructional goals are and be able to have a game that, that meets them. Now, that's not to say um, that that's all we do, right? The games, they're really like an entry point to more learning. So what we've seen in the last year or two is that the games are great and they're, they're really what gets you into iCivics, but ultimately uh, the teachers start downloading lesson plans and then they do web quests, which are project-based learning, and then they find out about how to use their points with Ashoka. I mean, it's a whole series of, um, of activities that you can do that gets you closer and closer to a relevant problem in, in your community or in the world. And you were saying to me off camera that the justice is committed in, in her absolute devotion to this issue. She said this is what she wants to be her legacy, and therefore iCivics has to go mobile. Right, exactly. The justice has said that she's taken a state-by-state -state approach. Mm -hmm. You've partnered most recently with Ohio and Correct. the university there, Ohio State University. How, how are you uh, transforming this into a national campaign uh, if you're taking a state-by-state -state approach? So it is a national campaign, and our traffic is national now. We are in all 50 states. Uh, we reach 85% uh, of zip codes in America right now. Um, and, uh, and we're very proud that we reach into uh, low social economic status uh, districts, uh, particularly um, to, uh, um, so proportionally uh, more um, than the average. And so that, that we're very proud of. Um, but we do believe at this point, when you've reached into 50% of middle school social studies teachers, mm -hmm. in order to push the needle forward to get to close to 100%, you're going to need to have boots on the ground within each state. Now, in many states, we already have that. 
Um, we're very close to partners in Arizona and in Florida. Um, but we feel that in some states we're going to need more. Boots on the ground as in iCivics offices? No, or, or, uh, no. We're going to oh, work alliance, with partners. Volunteer yes. alliance, volunteer alliance? Well, we have networks right now in all 50 states of ambassadors um, who are sort of a high level, uh, usually from the legal field, uh, folks who are committed to our success. Um, we have in many, many states trainers who offer services to um, professional development training to teachers uh, to ensure that they know how to teach with iCivics and other civic education resources. So uh, completely free to everyone and uh, easy to access. And so we had these networks. We also have a 25-person teachers council. These are volunteer positions, people who are just fanatical about um, iCivics and who want to help us. And, and they're fantastic. I mean, they're fantastic folks. They blog for us. They get their networks of teachers engaged. But in order, yet again, to push forward, and, and Senator O'Connor constantly tells me, it's not enough. <laughs> we need to do more. And in order to do that, uh, we're going to need to reach other types of teacher networks um, that can only be accessed to par local partners. What is the risk? Um, the risk is that we spread ourselves too thin. Um, what's, what's the risk of d digital democratic illiteracy as opposed to digital democratic literacy? What's the, because she makes this pitch and you do too. What's the risk to not engage our youth? I mean, is there another choice, really? Uh, is there? Um, we are losing them in droves. And if we don't do this... What, what are we mean, losing them to? Um, I think the popular culture is fighting us in a, in a major, major way, right? It, I have to say that even though the numbers are really appalling, and, and appalling is the mm -hmm. word for it, um, I, I see some signs of for optimism, so some, some idea that we should be optimistic. Uh, because the, the materialistic culture, the sort of popular culture of celebrity and, and sports and so on, um, that has its limitations, I think, at some point. And people, kids are uh, heading towards a, a career or a training or technical or college, um, find themselves sort of facing the need to, for purpose in life, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I've heard more and more about that. Um, and about kids searching for that purpose recently. It, what a better purpose than to be known and be effective to your community and be part of our democracy. And, and I think we ought to make sure that kids understand that that is, civic life is about all of those things. And just creating that relationship between you and a purpose is, be is really essentially saying, there's a link between you and a greater good and a greater sense of community. So you are linked to others. That's the core of having a purpose in life, right? Uh, Is one of the root problems here that that purpose has been degraded from the baby boomer generation to this generation? Or maybe not baby boomers specifically, but that children uh, don't see in their parents that sense of democratic purpose. Right. I, I do think that that's an issue. Otherwise, it'd be hard to explain the numbers uh, that we have now. And I think we need to reverse that. But I am seeing, I think, the beginning of a reversal. Um, and I, this is, this is, <laughs> you have to remain optimistic in this work that's, that's difficult. Um, but I am seeing sort of this. We all go through these cycles, right? As you're saying, maybe uh, through the generations, we kind of lost that sense of community and sort of relying on each other um, and trying to understand that we were all in this together. Um, but, you know, and then now at this stage, I think we, because that sense of purpose and reliance is now a global one, right? We're now at a stage where we're, we're all over the world. And, we have to come back to that, right? Mm -hmm. We have to come back. And the question is, how are we going to do that? Are our dem democratic institutions going to suffice? Um, and can they be adapted so that we can have those conversations in a different way? You have a game, don't you, called I Immigration Nation? Immigration Nation, yes, absolutely. I think that speaks to the issue here. Yes, yes. The purposelessness of an earlier generation that doesn't hear the stories from Ellis Island. Right. How we're part, our DNA is part of this democracy. That's right. That's right. That's why we want to make sure that kids can read 
and find purpose and meaning from primary sources. Those interviews at Ellis Island, those are beautiful, beautiful things. Um, I actually was just over the weekend um, with uh, someone's grandmother, and she was telling stories from India, or all of those stories, um, they may be in a different cultural context, um, but they carry a humanity message um, that can resonate with kids and can tie them and make them understand that generation after generation, we face the same challenges. We have to learn how to be good citizens and we have to be responsible to others. And now you and Justice O'Connor and my friend Eric Liu are on this bandwagon in saying this, we're all in this together. Right. But there are those who deplore that message. That's right. They think that there's an ulterior motive, a political motive. Mm -hmm. Now, the justice was a Republican in Arizona. Eric Liu was a speechwriter to a Democratic president. I don't know your politics, Louise, besides being a champion. And you view. won't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but do, do share with our viewers how we can avoid that question, or if we hear that question, the skepticism towards a common good, how we can fight back against it. I, I, I find that I've heard the argument and I've heard that and I'm sort of puzzled by it. I, I really, I don't think it can be a politically divisive argument for kids to understand that we have a constitution and what the amendments are and, and what, you know, how our democracy works. And I mean, you try to go to a country that has, doesn't have a rule of law, it doesn't matter which end of the spectrum you're on, you're not going to like the experience, right? So um, I, I think it's pretty fundamental and I think we've, Senator O'Connor has structured iCivics in a really nonpartisan way. We are committed to being nonpartisan, um, 100 percent. Yet fundamentally, um, we all go back to these basic concepts of how we operate in society. And, and yes, I hear the fact that we're not in this together, but but we have to be. I mean, you know, our entire survival as a nation depends on that. I, 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 I just... Uh, Is it a suspicion of teachers? Is it the, a suspicion of secularism in public education? Oh, maybe, but I really, I really wouldn't know. I, you're, I, from, you're from Canada. I am. I am. I am a U.S. citizen. <laughs> <laughs> I am from Canada where we had... I think we've had a similar problem as well. You know, I think both of our... It's similar. ...democracy, very similar. Um, but uh, we obviously come from a parliamentary mm -hmm. uh, system, uh, different. Uh, but uh, the, the fear of teachers is misplaced, if that's what it is. Uh, teachers are, I think, uh, I've met so many <laughs> over the years, are incredibly devoted professionals uh, who are trying to do the best for kids. Um, and we need to provide them with easy to use and, and simple tools. We're trying to do that. Um, teachers, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I know that we've got problems in this country with education. It's not that we don't uh, admit that that's the case. But to scale uh, uh, reform in this country is going to have to scale with teachers, not against teachers. Um, and I think everybody understands that. And one of the benefits is that these games don't possess the bias or the specter, the possibility of bias in the, in the way that they're formulated. And so uh, I've reported on it. You've told us about it. But there's so many examples of young people exposed to the games who then really engage in their democracy. Let me, let me actually tell you a story. Tell, tell me a story. <laughs> I actually came to iCivics uh, completely independently from Justice O'Connor or knowing about iCivics. Um, so uh, in 2012, uh, my son Daniel, who is uh, 12 now, um, was assigned a game and he came through the door and he said to mommy, I need to go play a video game. And I'm like, Oof, no, no, no. <laughs> in our household, we don't do that. You do your homework first and then play. Um, and he said, no, 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 you don't understand, Mrs. Brown. Uh, she was the fourth grade teacher, uh, assigned me this uh, video game as homework. I'm like, oh, really? Like, I think he's like putting it on and whatever. Um, but I let him do it and he went off and played, um, actually went to the White House because it was around the election time, which is exactly what I want teachers to do. Um, and he came out and he told uh, mommy, uh, all schools should be like iCivics. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> I had been in education technology for 20 years, and I had never heard this before. <laughs> I was like rather astounded. And uh, I'd, I'd made my kids, you know, be my play testers and try to click on things. Um, so I, I, was, uh, I, I really took note mm. um, at that point. 
Uh, and then subsequently I met uh, Justice O'Connor, Jeff, Jeff Curley, the former executive director. Um, but I think that the point of the story is not that, actually. It, it's that um, after uh, Daniel started asking me, oh, what county do we live in, Middlesex? Um, who are our elected representatives? Uh, here's who represents us in Congress. Here's who represents us. Um, and uh, did you vote, Mommy? And I was like, in the local election, Daniel, really? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, uh, and he insisted to come with me uh, to the voting booth. Um, I think we have a voter there, right? I, I, think, uh, <laughs> I think that it, there are different processes to get to voting, right? Um, and I think that experience of going with your parents, that experience of, mm. of seeing it through. Uh, some folks have studied this um, and, and found that there, there is some uh, intergenerational transfer there. Um, I think it's interesting to me. Um, it, it's just actually what happened to me. So. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it was great. And, and Daniel mm -hmm. had been exposed to an iPhone or smart technology prior to this, but this was different. Yeah. Uh, he had been not, had no iPhone at our house <laughs> till, till later, okay. uh, but um, he, he had played on uh, computer games many times. He had played on uh, technology uh, platforms for the classrooms before. Yes. Well, absolutely. he must have. Yes. So your I, My iPad, iPad yeah, absolutely. Played, he, yeah, he has one now. He, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I think um, in terms of the curricular design, yes. there's a difference between the technology and the platform that's of right. the technology. That's right. And that's what your story conveyed to me. Right. I think it's very different. This kind of game where we're actually both engaging them, but mostly in something of interest. Like, it's fun, right? Uh, but it's hard. Right. So it's both. I think you got to find that kind of balance. The point of iCivics is less about sort of the technology of it. It's about putting kids in the action. It's about them getting involved in an actual problem where we make it relevant for them. And they see the outcome of what they do matters. And that's what I think, you know, voters who don't vote, right? Um, they don't see it matters. They, they don't think it makes any difference. And, and, and somehow we have to get to the point where they understand it really matters and whether you vote or you don't vote. Because if you did, and you know we didn't have 22% voter uh, youth voter turnout, and you did get any action, maybe you, we would have different results. Um, Luis, thank you for telling us it does matter. <laughs> well, I, 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 I know we, we share that value. <laughs> Thanks. And thanks to you in the audience. I hope you join us again next time for a thoughtful excursion into the world of ideas. Until then, keep an open mind. Please visit the Open Mind website at 13.org slash open mind to view this program online or to access over 1,500 other Open Mind interviews. And do check us out on Twitter and Facebook at Open Mind TV for updates on future programming. Continuing production of The Open Mind has been made possible by grants from Ann Olnick Gumowitz, the Engelson Family Foundation, the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, the Joan Gans Cooney and Peter G. Peterson Fund, the Rosalind P. Walter Foundation, the Joanne and Kenneth Wellner Foundation, Sally Menard and Norton Garfinkel, with special thanks to the Schumann Media Center for additional support, and from the corporate community, Mutual of America.